Hey YouTube and thank you for watching Junkworks DIY Garage. Well today we are going to kind of go over this lift. I got my oh one I got my O1 Ford Explorer up above me here and I have my jack right here so I'm going to be moving this around getting her set up and kind of show you a few features on this jack right here um, now it did not come with the wildfire lift this is definitely something you have to pay for separately but I think for the price it's well worth what it'll do for you if you have one of these four post lifts. Let's get started. I'm going to actually get it set up here. So on this particular lift it's got several of these. Uh, they're basically made, well they're exactly made. You can lift this up here, stick that in there, put that on top of there. That way you don't have to lift as high. So we got that under there like that. It's got some taller ones if you need taller. And from the what little research honestly I've done, but it appears that you can stack these up as well. So that you can have a little bit more lift. And I probably would do that. You need to choose for yourself if you're comfortable doing that. So, so I see one downfall to this particular setup that we have going here is actually the rig I have on here is fairly narrow and to actually hit the frame is right here and here which to get that is right in this area right here so to counter out that I would have to use this part of it to lift with and I don't know how totally comfortable I am with that um, I could put it like on this cross member here and lift up I have some modifications later on that I am going to do to this that I think now that I see this I'll be doing a couple modifications uh, for sure and uh, I'll have those in another video. I'm going to have kind of a hack video of this uh, particular four post lift or any four post lift you have, things you can do to make life a little better. So let's move on. All right. Now I do see right on the opposite side of the uh, frame rails here there does appear to be yep it's the uh, where the body mounts are now these are have been jacked on and and been up quite a bit to be honest uh, could be I I could even have done that who knows looks like it's been done a while back but I would be okay with jacking up on those and these will actually right about where they are I'd have to put this one out a little bit and this one out a little bit and probably put the larger ones of these on uh, lift right there in fact that may be where we end up lifting I haven't decided if I want to lift here or you could bring it underneath the suspension here uh, you got to be careful you know I don't, you don't want to tear up nuts and bolts or tear the it's got a rubber padding on it um, and the more you jack up on nuts and bolts the more you'll tear up that but I think this will be a good spot for a lot of things if I was just changing tires or something like that um, but regardless you need to choose yet again where you think you're comfortable jacking things up that is definitely a personal preference and safety priority I do think I'm going to go ahead and Use these taller ones here. Hoping you can see all this. And let's see here. There's one thing about this. I'm going to have to get used to kind of where things are by feel. Now this, they do have one of these. It's an air over hydraulic system here. I chose not to go that route. Um, I'd rather have a little bit maybe more control I guess right now while I'm learning all this stuff because um, I do not have a lot of um, admittedly a lot of use of one of these lifts it's been a long time I used them a few times in school a couple places where I worked and those kind of things but I don't have a ton of experience so far so we're kind of learning together at the same time but because of that i decided to take the slower route and just get the pump one plus it's a couple hundred bucks cheaper 
which makes it more affordable. Now it's got this right here, which obviously lets this down, lets the fluid out. It works just like any jack, you know, any one of you have probably used. So if you bought this lift, you probably know how to use a jack, but we're gonna tighten that up and pump her up. I talked about this and put this together and put it on in my finishing up my wildfire lift video. I'm not sure the exact name of it, but that's the one that I, I put this on to the lift and kind of showed you a little bit of that kind of stuff. This video is just going to be me kind of showing the lift being used more than anything. And if you have any questions about it or wondering certain features about it, I figured I'd do this video and hopefully somebody will see it. If there's something you don't see that you want to know, go ahead and uh, make a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Anyhow, so as you can see, we're just pumping it up and we're heading. Now something else I am going to kind of keep an eye on here now that we got this going up two things right here behind here is a spring so that as you push down on this this is going to lift up and cause the track that this rides on to directly sit on here so that this won't move now in realizing that there's a couple things that I am already doing somewhat wrong here and I'm not sure about um, on my other lift, I would definitely put this in neutral because I don't think this is going to lift, which allows, as you're lifting, you're going to either be pulling the jack backward or the back of the car needs to go forward or be able to roll forward. Otherwise, this whole thing is going to probably do this kind of thing. I'm going to do a little testing. Second thing, and something I have done wrong, so... Like I said, we're, we're learning together here a little bit. As you can see, behind either of these wheels, I do not have a chalk. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a chalk here and see how this lifts and see if that does slide a little bit and move with the car or if I'm going to have to bring this back down and put it in neutral. That is something we'll have to kind of learn together and you also need to decide for yourself how you want to do it. Right now, I'm going to get a chalk behind these tires because I did forget. And that is a very rookie mistake. I, you know, get everything up on the lift and thinking about all that, thinking about this and thinking about videoing, things get forgotten. So uh, be very aware of your safety. Now we got some chalks. Uh, right now I'm comfortable with where it is and I am going to start lifting. Now I do not have this car in neutral. I'm going to pay attention to lift. I do know, like I was telling, I said earlier, that this is going to go down and it shouldn't move. And I don't want it tipping. So I'm going to pay attention to the rollers here and see, see what, what happens. If things move with the lift or if things move with the car or if anything starts moving the way I don't want to, I'm going to stop. Now we just have to get this up just high enough to get the tires off. Another thing I just thought about, yet again, learning. If you have this thing as high as you can get it, uh, you remember you only have, you need to keep like three inches above you, probably I would say five inches at least above you to be able to get off of the locks. So if you end up with this on here and you want to put it down some, make sure you have enough room to go up some. Um, I should be fine with this one, but it's something I didn't think about till just now that I'm lifting this higher up. So also, if this thing is practically, you know, as high as it'll go, you only have a little bit before the ceiling, you're lifting your car up. Things, things I wasn't didn't think about till just right now. Um. I don't see anything moving. It's not wanting to 
slide off of the the uh, mounts here at all. So right now I am off of the ramp. This right here, you can see that lifts up. Down in here, there are several uh, stops, I would say, that are welded into there. Uh, and as you go down, it should hit one of those. So I may have to go up one more click. That's another thing. It appears you got two or three inches in between each. But to go down, I'm hitting the... I'm hitting... The tires are hitting before I'm getting to that. So I got to go up to the next lockout position. So yet another thing you got to think about is how far up between positions do you need to go. I'm move to the other side so I can get a little better oomph on this and be able to see where it's at on the locking system. Right about now, I'm getting comments. Oh, you should have got the hydraulic one. Nah. Not like I'm not, don't need the workout. And again, I'm going to just kind of look at things here. Everything appears to be looking pretty good. We are... not coming off of things so I'm just gonna go to the next lock I'm gonna stop real quick and go check up above me this is a little higher than I was hoping it would go and I do have to lift this up so I can put it down to be able to work on it so I'm gonna go check that out make sure I can still bring it up that you know three four inches five inches whatever it is I, I've, I've measured it out quite honestly three inches gets me off of all my locks to where I can bring it down so make sure I have at least that before I bring this thing down but I don't want to go up another two or three inches just to get it to the next lock and find out I'm having a problem but I think I'm okay So you can see this right here. I got it up. This appears to be the top tier here. There might be. Nope. I think this is as high as this thing will go. Which as you can see now I'm plenty far enough up. I'm going to go ahead and slowly lower it down. And hope we hit the lock here. Ooh. Alright. So we are now completely all the weight on that lock right there I am personally gonna give it a little bit of a pump just to make sure that you know there's a little bit of stress on both sides here so we are sitting up off the ground I've got to go and let this down so I can work on it so she jacked up I have moved this down further where I can easily get to this So, as of now, I'm very happy. This really does take a four-post lift and semi-turn it into a two-post lift. If I was to get another one of those, I'd say I'd have more function than a two-post lift. I can do all my suspension stuff I need to. I can also, when I'm done with that suspension stuff, put this down and be able to get up underneath there and do adjustments, tighten things down when I'm all done because you don't want to tighten your suspension stuff down a lot of it until it's down setting on on the wheels or on its suspension and now I can do that without having to climb underneath the car and prop things up and use jacks and you know or build blocks you know whatever it's it, it makes it nice uh, so a bit of a side note here that right there is definitely rubbing quite a bit I'm going to have to address this um, that is both 
got hooked up on that uh, once when I was trying to adjust it and when I bring this up this whole mechanism actually comes up and it's you know really rubbing on that so that's something I'm gonna have to address at some point um, if I were to design this I would either make it a little bit shorter so it doesn't hit on that or a little bit longer so it goes around that uh, when I do my other video on my four post lift hacks, I think is what I'm going to wind up calling it. It's a ways down the road because yet again, I'm fairly new with this lift. I've got some really good ideas of things I want to do with it. Um, but as I use it, the more I use it, the more ideas I get. So uh, this worked out really well. I am very, very happy I got this. I'm happy I got the pump jack personally. It just slowed things down for me made it so i could stop i could think about what i needed to do to be safe and uh so i'm glad i got that personally to each their own well i did the job i wanted to do quite honestly uh, i didn't find anything i was looking for really so i don't know if it's going to turn into a video or not but right now uh, i found a couple little things that might have been causing my problem I'm ready to put this down and test it, so I'm going to finish this off. Um, you might notice over here, there's a jack stand, and also over there is a jack stand. Nothing against the lift or anything like that. This is a 4,000 pound lift, so it should more than cover anything I have, including my truck. I should probably find out closer to what the uh, my motor front end of my truck is because um, it's probably pushing that 4,000 pounds all together but on the other hand uh, I noticed when I was doing some wiggling and jiggling this was you know I don't know I might be able to oh I need to get rid of some dirt in here there's a little bit not a whole lot of movement um, so I went ahead and put the jack stand just kind of underneath the pinch welds there so I pulled those out and uh, I'm just gonna you, can, you know there's really not a ton of rocking it's pretty darn sturdy I'm, I'm happy with this I just felt safer throwing a couple jack stands underneath there and it wasn't that difficult so you need to choose for yourself what is safe for you now we are gonna start bringing this jack down and first to do that we got to lift it up until this will lift up here. So now I can see when it comes off of the lock mechanism here. Okay, then we lift that up. There's a little red thing here. Do not get your fingers in there. Kind of obvious, should say. And you gotta hold this up the whole time. And I honestly am going to duck because this is a little bit shorter than me, the amount of room I have here, so. I don't want to smack my head if it comes down quicker than I think it will. I'm just going to go as slow as I can. There you go. I've completely let off of the little knob here. And I'm just going to let it do its thing slowly. I'm in no hurry. All right, we're pretty well down. I'm going to go ahead and speed her up a little bit here. And we are down. So, as you can see, all in all, I am ecstatic with this. This just made the job of taking the wheels and tires on and off so much easier. All right, so I grabbed the tape measure. And with those on, it's three inches. You could probably take those off. Let's see here. We're gonna, yeah, between three quarters and seven eighths more right there if you took those off to drive over it. Um, but I'm pretty happy. Something else I just noticed is these actually turn on here. So I don't know if there's a way to, yeah, there's like a little screw in there that we probably can buy replacements of those rubber pads when they wear down we'll see anyhow and then this all the way out 
from the edge of this right here is 18 and a half inches. I do not know metric measurements, so you'll have to figure out your own math or Google it. Um, so there's a couple little specs on that. Now, this is for the jack that I that came with my lift. So I, you know, I don't know if there's other jacks. I know there's other jacks out there. I don't know if they're made from the same companies or if this is a totally different design or anything about that as far as that's concerned. This is definitely specifically to the one that comes with the wildfire lift. All right. Well, I think that's about it. Um, if you do have any other questions or comments on this, go ahead and give me a holler and I will try and answer them the best I can for you. And thanks for watching Junk Works DIY Garage, where I'm proud to say I'm a jack of all and master of none. You all have a good one.